A Duff Said is brought to you by Sheldon Street Pizza. Visit them online at SheldonStreetPizza.com or stop by Sheldon's during your next trip to Lake Orion. Sheldon Street Pizza, the official pizza of A Duff Said. And by Fourth Coast Cider Works, quality craftsmanship, quality hard cider. You can check them out online at FourthCoastCiderWorks.com or come get a can or a howler at their Canterbury Village location. Not available for anyone under the age of 21. Please drink responsibly. Thank you so much for hitting the play button on your favorite listening device of choice from wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Duff Tyler, and that's a Duff said. Last year, the Lake Orion girls basketball team won its first district championship in 12 seasons. It was a breakout year for the Dragons, but this season, the Dragons are 11-3 and and expectations are much higher this year. Winning another district title is just the beginning for this group, but to accomplish their goals, the seniors on the Lake Orion roster know they have to be leaders on and off the court. Senior Maddie Ebert embraces that role, which is why she's one of the leading scorers for the Dragons. Back on January 10th, she scored 17 points in Lake Orion's win over Rochester Hills' Stony Creek. I caught up with her after that game, and as you're about to hear, Maddie is determined to be a leader, not just on the stat sheet, but everywhere she goes in Lake Orion. My conversation with Maddie Ebert starts now. For many years now, Lake Orion didn't really have much success. Uh, You've had a lot of uh, rough years, some lean years in there. Last year, you guys found a way to bring home the first district championship since 2010. And now you have that target on your back. People know they can't take you lightly anymore. They know that uh, you guys are are a lot tougher and a lot more determined than any Lake Orion team that they've seen in the past. First off, what's it like to play with that target on your back? Yeah, it's definitely different than what I've played before. I mean, I came in here freshman year and every game was just, hey, you know, we have nothing to lose. You know, they have the stuff to lose. They're the best team. We just got to go play how we can. And now the roles are reversed. So now... Our coaches are telling us, hey, they're going to give us our best game every game now. Even the teams that are maybe underskilled than us, they're going to give us all they have because they want to take us down. So it's just a big accomplishment, definitely a different mindset switch. You know, you got to play. You got to be Chris every single day. Stick to what you know or else it might slip one game. But as far as winning that first district title Mm -hmm. since 2010, what was it like for you to experience that moment and to just be a part of that team? It was amazing. I mean, it was like one of the best feelings ever, especially being with this team. Like we have nine seniors on the team. So being able to share that with my class and all my teammates, it it was just amazing. And having not been able to be that type of program and so on. And then especially just as we see now, like more and more students are coming to our games, seeing what we're about. It means a lot. What's it like to have that support? Because you had a lot of rowdy fans in the stands for you guys tonight. Some of the boys' basketball team that uh, won their game earlier this evening, they stuck around for you guys. And uh, while you guys were in the locker room, they did a shoot-around, just waiting for you guys to come back. What was it like to see that enthusiasm from your hometown crowd? It's awesome. I mean, we all really appreciate it so much. We want to be there for their team as well. So the fact that we all have mutual support for each other and just want to see each other succeed definitely helps. And it, of course, brings the energy up in the gym every night, which gets our team more energetic and just goes for a great game. It says a lot about Lake Orion and being Orion tough. What is it like for you personally to represent the community of Lake Orion? Um, it's a huge deal. Um, you know, we have little kids that will like see you in the hallway or younger kids and be like, oh, like, do you guys have a game tonight? Oh, I saw you play. Friday, you did amazing, like, oh, I want to be on varsity when I get older. So you're just setting a precedent for the younger kids coming up and just this community, having them to come around, like bring everybody together to watch. It's a huge deal. 
And not only do you get to do that here at your own gym here in Lake Orion and some, some of the surrounding areas like Clarkston, Rochester, but you also had a chance to play on the floor at Little Caesars Arena. What was that experience like for you? That was amazing. I'll never forget that. It was so much fun. And although we didn't get the outcome we had hoped for, it was still an amazing experience to play on that court. And we even had, like, talking about the community coming together, we still had a ton of people come for that game too. So that just shows, like, no matter where we play, they're going to show up for us, which goes a long way. Now, I don't want to brag, but I'm one for two on the floor at LCA shooting free throws. No. But that was after a uh, Pistons game. Uh, my wife and I got a chance to do a little shoot around afterwards. Oh, really? So I'm one out of two in two games shooting free throws. Mm -hmm. How did you do? Pretty well. We Our free throw percentage this year hasn't been the best we hoped for as a team, but, you know, that will just come with practice, getting better. But at... Little Caesars, I think down the stretch, we did solid with our free throws. It was, just wasn't the ending we had hoped for. But how long did you stay on the court afterwards just to take in oh. that opportunity? Yeah, um, quite a while, you know, just soaking it all in, remembering that moment. Now, do you go there often to see Pistons and Red Wings games? Yeah, actually, because the company my dad works for, like they have uh, – some seats up there so my dad will take us here and there and it's always a great environment so it was so cool to go and watch those games and then actually be able to play on that court. Yeah that's something I'm sure you will never forget. Yeah. You've built so many great memories. What are some of your fondest memories just playing at this school with this being your senior year? Um, definitely the top is winning districts. I mean just like I said coming from freshman year the team we were at to the team we've now is just beyond gap. It's just an amazing accomplishment to get here, and it just feels really good to know that we can just keep playing and work to get better and better. So districts was definitely top, and then probably playing at Little Caesars was awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, as they say about districts, that was last year, yeah. so you got to put that behind as soon as the season starts. And I know you guys have like a ritual where you write down the things that you really want to accomplish when the season starts. What were some of the things that were on your list? Uh, my list was... Uh, holding each other and my teammates accountable because that's a big thing like example this game we got down early but we got to stick with it remind each other of the little things do the little things right and it will lead to we can't just get 12 points in one play you know we got to take it step by step so holding each other accountable and then a main uh team goal is just defense um our offense comes from defense, so the more we stay aggressive on defense and bring the energy on that end, we'll be just fine in games. When it comes to accountability, it starts with the senior leadership, yeah. and you're one of those senior leaders on this team. What's it like to know that you have those expectations, that you have to have that leadership role and you have to excel at it, but you also have to have that accountability for yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot, but it's also an honor. You know, I take great pride with being a leader on this team, and I just want to make it fun for my teammates too, you know. Um, just bring them up when they're down. Remind them, though, like we got to stay intense, we got to stay focused, and we're all here for the same goal, which is to win. We all want to win. We all want to play our best, and so if we work together as a team, we'll get that done. How would you evaluate this team up to this point? I think we're just up for anything. You know, we want to give each team a battle, and uh, – we just want to play our best every single game, and we want to win always, but mainly we just want to play hard every single night. And yeah. What is the expectation moving forward in the last two months of the season before we head into March? Yeah, um, I think it's just honestly stick to Dragon basketball. That's what our coach always says, which, like I said, comes from defense first. Like That's a huge thing we reiterate constantly throughout the season. And we'll run into some tough games here and there, which, of course, like any team will. We won't have our best night, but perseverance, we have to stick with it. And, you know, we just have to take it one day at a time. We can't get too far ahead of, you know, focusing on districts or we're 9-1 and one now. we got to win, 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 win. We just have to take it one day at a time. When did you first discover your passion for basketball? Because I can see it's something that's in your blood and it's something that you're very passionate about. I would say when I was like really little, like probably second grade. I mean, I come from a family of seven, so I've seen my older siblings play sports and they played basketball. None of them have like stuck with it as long as I have, but they played, they got me into it. And then ever since I was like, seven years old I fell in love with it. Now how were you the one that managed to persevere? Um you know I just think it was just 
I loved it more, you know? Like, my brother played football, so that was, he loved that. And then my two sisters, they liked it, but I just, I don't know, when I picked up a ball, I just knew this was my sport. Now, do you play any other sports? No, I've just played basketball my whole life. And so you probably have done like travel basketball and all that other stuff. So what are some things that you've learned about yourself through basketball? Um, accountability, hard work. Hard work is a huge thing, especially in basketball. Like coaches always say we can't teach you hard work or like work ethic or any of that. So just learning that as you grow is a huge thing in any sport. And who is your biggest inspiration to keep you going in basketball? Um, probably my teammates and my AU coaches and honestly my family. They, I mean, they drove me around, took me to all the AU tournaments, did all that for me. Um, these coaches here, like everybody just supports me and wants to see me succeed. So it's just awesome. Tell me about those drives with your folks to go to those AAU games and to go to those practices and getting that chance to bond with them in the car. What are those experiences like and how much do they mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot. I mean, some of the times we had like nine hour drives, so just like me and my dad talking back and forth. Um, whether it's about basketball or just life, like we got such a closer bond from those car rides and it's been really fun. Obviously, the OA Red is something you guys have got your sights on. Just being able to be in that mix and to be a team that could do some things that hasn't been done in a long time in Lake Orion. You guys have really become like the standard bearers for this program. Mm -hmm. What is it like to just be a part of that and to know that you're kind of writing your own history here at really Lake Orion? I mean, I think it's just really fun for all of us. You know, obviously we want to do well and we want to make our community and teammates and coaches proud, but at the same time we have to focus on enjoying the moment, like taking a step back here and there and realizing like, hey, like we got ourselves to this point, we've put in the work, trust ourselves and keep going. I'm going to give you the chance now to write the script for your ending here at Lake Orion. How is that chapter in your life going to end or how would you like it to end? I would like it to end with another district championship and then a goal is also just winning a round in regionals. Last year we got kicked out by Clarkston first round so it would be awesome to be able to get an extra step in regionals. Maddie is pretty good putting up some big numbers on the court but she also enjoys crunching them in the classroom. She'll explain that next. If it's pizza night, Sheldon Street Pizza has got you covered. Sheldon's pizzas are always made fresh when you order them, and the readers of the Lake Orion Review have voted Sheldon's breadsticks as the best in Lake Orion. Stop by Sheldon Street Pizza at 3767 South Baldwin Road in Orion Township, or you can order online by visiting SheldonStreetPizza.com. Don't forget to try one of Sheldon's salads with his special blend of homemade salad dressings. He's also got some pretty tasty desserts as well. Sheldon Street Pizza. More than just pizza. It's the official pizza of a Duff set. Okay, I want to take a second now to talk to the parents and adults listening to this podcast. If you are looking for a fun night out during the weekend here in Lake Orion, then stop by Fourth Coast Cider Works. Fourth Coast Cider Works is the place to be for hard cider in Oakland County. Located in the main entrance to Canterbury Village, Fourth Coast is quality craftsmanship, quality hard cider. Stop by Fourth Coast and try some of their many flavors on tap. You can also take some home in a can or a howler. Fourth Coast is open Thursday through Sunday. For a complete list of ciders and hours, go to fourthcoastciderworks.com. Fourth Coast Cider Works. The best hard cider is on the Fourth Coast. Not available for anyone under the age of 21. Please drink responsibly. You're listening to the best local sports podcast in Michigan, and that's a Duff set. Your favorite subject in school? Probably math. Okay, you're one of the few that actually says math. So what is it about math that you really like? 
Well, I've just always been pretty good at math, so I just like the challenge. And my math teacher, sophomore year, Mr. Powell, really made me like math, so. Favorite teacher at Lake Orion? Probably Co Mr. Booker. What is your relationship like with him? Um, he's just always been somebody who's helped me get through high school, you know. He's made it fun, any class I've been in with him. He was actually my teacher for Teacher Appreciation Night at Lake Orion, so he's just always been a teacher that I can lean on. Does he come to your games? Yeah. He was here for a little bit earlier. What's it like to be able to play in front of him and not just be a member of his class, but to see him come out and support you? Yeah, it means a lot. And, uh, you know, I always want to, like, make him proud, you know, um, play well, everything like that. But it just means a lot that um, he supports me like that and is willing to take the extra time after school when he's had a long day to come watch us. Favorite post-game meal? Hmm. Honestly, this is the first one I've stumped you on. Yeah, honestly, like it's kind of bad, but Taco Bell. What do you like at Taco Bell? I love Taco I, Bell. I, I think that's a great way to go. You know, yeah. some of the guys are all about sagebrush and no, all those other I'm places. Like too heavy, you know. I don't really like to. After a game, I'm not that hungry. So just a nice cold slushy and quesadilla sounds so good. Well, not only that, but it's a little bit cheaper too. Yeah, yeah. See, you're, you're and smart. And it's like right here. So. Yeah, you're smart. You're looking out for your wallet, and, and you know you're not looking to do too much after a game. Yeah. So what was your favorite gift that you got for Christmas this year? Um, probably my UConn merch of uh, women's basketball. I love the UConn women's basketball team, so I got a bunch of merch from them. Who is your favorite all-time UConn women's basketball player? Definitely Paige Beckers. What is it you like about her and her game? I just love the way she plays, and she's also such a clutch player. Like, whenever her team needs a basket, she's there, and she's such a playmaker. She gets all her teammates open, but it's also knows when she needs to take over, which I really admire. How often do you try to take notes when you're watching her play and bring some of that to the floor and try to emulate her game? Yeah, definitely a lot. Like, every time I watch, not even just her, but UConn women's basketball in general, I love their team, and to just watching them play is – how I feel like any team would want to play. They just push the ball. They know where their teammates are going to be. They hustle on defense. Did you make any New Year's resolutions for yourself? Not yet, actually. I have to get on that. But Well, we're only a week into the year, yeah, so you've got a little bit of time. But what would you say is your ultimate goal for 2023? You've got a lot to look forward to in the next several months. You've got uh, the tournament coming up, and you've got graduation, too. And you've got to pick a college. Yeah, so I'm graduating early, actually. So. Well, good for you. Yeah, What's your GPA? 3.9. Nice. Yeah, Very nicely but done. I'd say right now just uh, – probably making that college decision. That's something I just want to, you know, get over with so that I can enjoy that process, but also put all my focus on this team and what we have to come. With math being a favorite subject, what is something that you're looking at as a potential major for college? Honestly, nothing with math. It's actually science, but I want to be an athletic trainer and then minor in psych. Now, speaking of athletic trainers, they've been in the news a lot this past week because of what happened to DeMar Hamlin yeah. with the Buffalo Bills and that awful situation there. But they've actually uh, kind of come to the forefront. And how much of that have you seen and kind of been inspired by? Yeah, a lot. Just seeing um, how much of an impact they have. And I've always wanted to stay around sports. And then also our athletic trainer here has inspired me so much. I, she's just amazing, and I go to her for so much. So she's been a huge inspiration with me on that too. Hopefully we can keep the bumps and bruises yeah. to a minimum for the next few months, yeah. and you can get that district title. Maddie Everett, thank you so much for making the time of this course. week. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you for coming out. And that's a wrap on this edition of A Duff Said. Many thanks once again to Maddie Everett for joining us this week. Now, Maddie recently announced on social media that she is going to play college basketball for the women's team at Baldwin Wallace University. So best of luck to Maddie as she is now headed to someplace called Berea, Ohio. I have no idea where that is. But if you're curious, I did learn that Baldwin Wallace is the alma mater of former Ohio State football coach Jim Tressel. Our announcer for this episode was Mid-Michigan Now Sports Director Sam Ali. Sam is the hardest working man covering sports in Mid-Michigan. Now I seem to have some sort of insider knowledge that allows me to back up that statement. And if you're in the Mid-Michigan area, 
Be sure to check out Sam Ali weeknights and especially on Friday nights when Sam brings you, for the win, all of the exciting highlights from the hardwood. Now, if you would like to hear previous episodes of A Duff Said, all you have to do is go to my website, aduffsaid.com. You can also become a subscriber to this podcast. Just download Podbean, Apple Podcasts, the iHeartRadio app, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow me on Facebook. Just look me up. My handle is sports journalist Duff Tyler. Over on Twitter, I made it a little easier for you. It's just Duff Tyler. Until next time, I am Duff Tyler, and I'm reminding you that if Duff said it, it must be true, because that's what a Duff said. <laughs>